Hi everyone, I've had a pretty stressful week. Mental health is not the best, so today we're gonna spend the whole day painting. <laughs> Let's talk about our sponsor for today. This video is sponsored by Skillshare and if you don't already know who Skillshare is, they are an online creative platform with thousands of inspiring classes for creative individuals like you and me. They have classes and levels ranging from beginner to intermediate to advanced and there are so many categories to choose from. My personal favorites have been illustration, graphic design, video editing, and fine arts. Last week, I worked on getting more comfortable with sketching in my sketchbook and this week, I wanted to focus on color and color composition. So I've been watching this video called Beyond Watercolor, Learn to Paint with Gouache by Leah Gorin. And in this video, she talks about the different techniques that you can use to accomplish a better result with gouache as well as how to pick colors and also tips and tricks on how to layer gouache paint. If you're a part of my Patreon Discord community, then you know that I have been actively using Skillshare for the past three months. I find that whenever I'm stuck in a rut or an art block, it really helps me to watch other artists work because it then inspires me to practice and get better myself. Today, you can can join Skillshare for less than $10 a month for an annual subscription and the first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium today. So thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. bit of a funny story but until last year i never really learned how to pronounce gouache correctly i used to think it was gouache paint <laughs> and now it sounds really weird but i learned how to say it correctly by watching other studio vloggers but back in high school when i was doing a lot of art i mentioned that i steered away from paints because colors intimidated me i stuck to black and white mediums like graphite and charcoal because i felt safer with a monochromatic scheme. Colors were a very difficult concept for me to grasp. For some reason, I was really scared to pick colors. I didn't know which colors to use and where. But now that I've been doing art again for almost a year, I'm starting to notice the same color combinations and color patterns show up in my work. 
So in this video, I'm just mixing up a few colors that I like and I decided to draw them into squares on my sketchbook as a warm-up. For today, I wanted to experiment specifically with layering other mediums on top of gouache, so like pen on gouache or using a Posca pen on top of gouache and to see what the results look like. So I'm going to add white and black patterns on top of these colored squares and I'm going to show you what it looks like.
meet my new friend hoodie cat <laughs> i feel like whenever i'm like lost and don't really know what to draw next i always go back to cats and it's just a very cold day today so i thought let's draw a comfy cat so hoodie cat so while i work on the drawing i just wanted to um give you a little update on how my week has been going i did mention at the beginning of the video that i had a pretty stressful week and that has a lot to do with my job application process with the job that i mentioned to you in my last video so the first interview that i had was more of a brief overview of my resume and they kind of did like a background check to see what i studied and like what kind of work experience i had and this week they asked me more specific questions like how would you handle conflict with another teacher how would you handle conflict with a student what would you do if a student came in and they weren't in the best mood and i have a lot of dance teaching experience from when I lived in Thailand, I was a teacher for six to seven years. I worked all the way through high school and college and also a little bit after college before I moved to the US. So I wasn't too nervous about answering those questions. But when we started talking about like immigration stuff, that's when I started like sweating profusely. I was just so nervous about what he was going to say. But basically he just asked me like what types of visas could be like possible for someone like me so i mentioned the h1b work visa and he suggested the o1 artist visa but from my understanding these past few years the o1 has become really really difficult to get like you need to be an outstanding artist to be able to get that you need to be in competitions you have to be interviewed by like famous magazines and be on tv and stuff like that to be considered an artist but so i became interested in the artist visa and i did some more research to see what the qualifications are basically and i even looked up like is it possible to be considered an artist if you're like a content creator on youtube or instagram or some other social media platform and i think one of the comments was like you need at least a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube to be able to qualify for that and i was like okay that's out the window but all visa stuff aside the interviewer still wanted to invite me on site for like a trial run to just learn some of the dances and also to practice teaching and show him how i would teach dance basically so that was wednesday thursday and friday of this week i went into the dance studio for three hours and they taught me a few dance styles that are more like ballroom dance type like salsa mamba swing dance like all the american social dances that i've never learned before and after going through all the basics they wanted to see how me and this other applicant would teach the dances that we literally just learned like within the past two or three days so that was a little bit nerve-wracking but also it was very like I felt like I was back in my environment. I haven't been in a dance studio in a long time and I practically grew up in one. And despite being super nervous for the trial runs, I actually had a lot of fun. Um, the first day I was so anxious that I forgot to eat, like I barely ate anything all day and after doing a bunch of spins in swing dance, I started to get lightheaded and at first I thought I could handle it. I excused myself to go to the bathroom and I just kind of like leaned on the wall and took a few deep breaths and I felt better. So I came back out and the teacher was going to teach me the Argentine tango and as she's talking, my eyes were just like glazing over like i started to see spots teacher's voice started to like echo a bit so at that point i was like i'm probably going to faint so i need to sit down and at first i was worried that they were gonna think like oh like you're not physically fit enough to be a dance teacher you're kind of weak for getting lightheaded so easily but no one thought that like that was all in my head i told her that i was really anxious about the test run and i didn't eat enough that day and she was really understanding which i appreciate i think the fear and embarrassment that i felt stems from my cultural upbringing like i feel like if the same situation happened to me back in thailand they would probably kick me out of the studio or something and the next day i just cooked myself like two big meals before i went on a trial run i made sure i had enough calories enough energy i did warm-up exercises at home to get my blood pumping before i went and i was doing fine all day but on the car ride there i suddenly started feeling nervous i was having trouble breathing i was telling my boyfriend that i feel like i'm not getting enough air in my lungs and i almost feel like I'm gonna throw up and just collapse and die and I haven't had an anxiety attack like that in so many years so I was a little taken aback and I didn't really know what to do luckily my boyfriend remembered the grounding technique that he actually learned from me when I was doing psychotherapy in school so eventually I calmed down and I was able to breathe a little better I didn't feel like my heart was gonna pop out of my chest anymore but just 
getting that feeling for two to three days just made me super super exhausted and after doing the test run where i was dancing for like two and a half hours i became both mentally and physically tired so i just couldn't do anything anymore and that's why i didn't film anything this week there was just a lot going on for me both physically and mentally and i didn't really have time to do anything that i wanted for myself um I didn't even get up to cook until today because I was just so tired, so exhausted and it's the kind of tired that doesn't go away with sleeping you know, it's like my brain is fried I think it was Friday night when I was like getting ready to go to bed I started feeling really crappy and I was like, it's okay, you're gonna go to sleep soon, everything's gonna be fine and the moment I put my head on the pillow, I just started crying because I was so tired I feel like I've spent more than half my life feeling this way, feeling like I'm too tired to get out of bed, too tired to do the things that I love, feeling like talking to a friend or family member is like too much effort for me to be able to handle. I've bought a bunch of books, I've listened to a lot of talks about self-help and how to like change your mindset and be more positive and I'm trying really hard to get better but it's just, <laughs> I'm gonna cry, it's just really hard to break out of this thought pattern especially if you've thought this way your whole life and it's really hard for me to talk about this because i feel like i've brought this up with friends and family before throughout my life and most of the time people just brush it off because they don't think it's a real problem and that's just not true because i could have everything going right and i would still feel empty I would still feel like something's missing and I'm like an invisible ghost floating around and no one sees me for some reason. I know the reason, I just can't say it because in real life they're watching. <laughs> but I feel like my last couple of videos, including this one, just has a very solemn, um, quiet kind of vibe. And that's just how I'm feeling right now. So whatever I create kind of reflects how I'm feeling. I want to try other mediums of traditional art and I want to cook new recipes because apparently you guys say you enjoy watching me cook and I just want to do like a fun cook with me but with an artist twist where I draw everything I cook afterwards or something like that but I just don't have the energy to do it right now so I'm not gonna apologize for not making happy content because we are practicing not apologizing for every single thing we do <laughs> but yeah that was my weekly update that went a little longer than expected. I was gonna do some art while talking but then I realized I can't multitask so I'm gonna finish this drawing of Hoodie Cat and show you what it looks like. The sun is set so the lighting's gonna be a little weird. But yeah, in terms of job hunting and visa complications, things seem to be looking up so I have a little bit of hope that keeps me going and I had a lot of fun painting today so hopefully next week is a better one for me.